Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome back to studying the Word of God. I pray that you are well and prospering in the work of the Lord. Let us look to Him in prayer. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, again, we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in the life of your people. We thank you for our life, health, and strength, O oh Lord God. And we just want to give you the praise, O oh Lord God, and you continue to open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding to your word, O oh Lord God, that we may continue to mature and grow up in you in all things, that you may get both the praise and the glory out of all that we both say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back with you again. Praise the Lord. I just want to say that uh, my knee replacement recovery is coming along uh, quite well. Amen. Again, uh, pain is part of the uh, process, uh, but I just thank God for giving me the endurance uh, to continue to do that which he's called me to do. Amen. Despite it all. So with that, thank you for your prayers. And right now, let's do a quick review from last week, starting with our foundation scripture scripture that we have in Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 where the scripture said and the Lord commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof Thou shalt surely die. Now again in this series of study, we're taking the time to explore the evolution of the decline of our longevity here on earth. And in doing so, uh, will also cause us to discuss death as well. Now last week, we said that the life duration of man has been greatly reduced since the fall of man and before the flood man lived to be almost 1000 years old as recorded in genesis chapter 5 as well as genesis chapter 9 and verse 29 and we looked at these recordings in detail and discovered that the first duration of years ranged from 969 years down to 700 and 77 years and so we were able to see clearly that man was living upwards of 1,000 years with Methuselah reaching the highest recorded age at 969 years my god then we took a look at Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 uh, 2 3 1 through 3 and then we got a glimpse into the sins of angels, uh, which is another interesting subject in and of itself. But I needed to point out the fact that they had a role in the lifespan of man before and after the flood. So we said that the second stage of decline after the flood ranged from 600 years down to 433 years and that the second stage should be obvious that man is dying according to God's word in Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 and Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 through 17 records the second stage of man's longevity where we find shame nor son lived to be 600 years old and select lived to be 433 years my god so with these actual recordings man's lifespan dwindled from a recorded 969 years to 600 years to that of 433 years now let's look at the uh, next stage of longevity when man began to live a recorded 230 years to 239 years. So with that, let's go to Genesis 
chapter 11, verses 18 through 23. And the scripture read, And Peleg, uh, Peleg lived 30 years, and begot Reuel. And Peleg lived after he begot Reuel 209 years. So that's 30 plus 209, giving us 239 years. And he begat sons and daughters. And Rehu lived two and thirty years and begat Serug. And Rehu lived after he begat Serug two hundred and seven years. So that's thirty plus two hundred seven, giving us two hundred and thirty seven years. And he begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived thirty years and he begat uh, Nahor. And Serug lived it after he beget Nehor 200 years. So that's 30 plus 200 giving us 230 years. And he begat sons and daughters. Again, it should be obvious that man's longevity has fallen sharply in the book of Genesis. But we're not done yet. However, I encourage you to take a moment and realize how precious your life really is. And then make a commitment, a radical commitment to take care of this, to take care of it, even if you haven't already. Now let's look at the next recorded duration of man's years on earth. Well, we will find that it dropped from 205 years down to 140 years. Again, let's start with Genesis chapter 11, verses 24 through 36, and verse 32. As the scripture read, And the whore lived nine and twenty years, and he begat Terah. And the whore lived after he begat Terah, and hundred and nineteen years. So that's 29 plus 119, which should give us 148. And he begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived the 70 years and begat Abram, Nehor, and Haran. And the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah died in Haran. Now, Genesis 25 Genesis chapter 25, verse 7 and verse 17 says this, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, and hundred threescore and fifteen years, which gives him a hundred and sixty plus fifteen, which gives him a hundred and seventy-five years. Verse 17 says, And these are the days of the life of Ishmael, and hundred and thirty and seven years, a hundred and thirty seven years, and he gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered unto his people. My God. Now Genesis chapter thirty five, verse twenty eight. And the days of Isaac were an hundred and four score years, giving us one hundred and eighty years. Remember, we are dropping from 205 years to 140 years. Now let's look at Job chapter 42 verse 16. And the scripture says, after this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even for generation. So Job died being old and full of days. Now some scholars judge that Job lived, Job lived 70 years before his trials, which would put his years at 210. Now, since I don't have any records of that, I'll stay with 140 years. It could very well read 
amen, that after all that Job went through, he lived 140 years. Praise the Lord. So I can understand why the other scholars would judge that he lived 70 years before, based on how the text uh, is written. But he could have still lived uh, 140 and still saw four generations uh, of sons. Amen. So, I'm going to stay with 140 years. You can judge what you think is proper in this incident. The point we're driving home is that man's longevity upon the earth has fallen greatly. It has fallen greatly. So, there you have it. Now, I don't know what Methuselah would say about all this. But still, my friend, 140 years is a long time. It's a very long time. Let's look at the next recorded duration of man years on earth. Yes, they do continue to drop. Now, notice that I keep using the word recorded. Why? Because I'm not giving you what I think or believe. Only what the Bible Record, so I'm not speculating. I'm not giving you my opinion or what have you. Only what's recorded. Praise God. So now we decline from 120 years down to 110 years. So let's look at Genesis chapter 50, verse 26. And the Bible says, So Joseph died being at 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, where it says concerning Moses, that Moses was at 120 years old when he died, 120 years old. His eye was not dim. The Bible says his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And in the Hebrew, the word abated means to flee, escape, or disappear. In other words, when Moses died, he was still strong. Still strong. Amen. After 120 years. Years, My God, I don't know about you, but that's certainly what I want them to say about me. Now let's look at Joshua chapter 24, verse 29. Joshua 24, verse 29. Amen. And it says that, And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. He died being a hundred and ten years old. A hundred and ten years old. Now, that's a far cry from 969. So even though today some are living to be a hundred and ten or more. I'm talking now in the 21st century. I believe the oldest living man, after doing some research, today he's a hundred and seventeen years old my god now that's still a lot of years considering how the body is worn down by then my god 117 years glory to god and still living and so and now we find that with modern living our years are less than that averaging just under 80. The nation average, the world average, is just under 80. However, with some reaching just over 100. Over 100, praise the Lord. So let's look at Psalms 90 and 10. Psalm 90 and 10, which is a favorite among believers. And let's see what we can uncover here uh, to better our understanding uh, of the scripture. It says, uh, Amen. The days of our years are three score years and ten, which would give us seventy. 
and if by reason of strength they be four score years, which would give us 80, by reason of strength, amen, our strength, how we have cared for ourselves and taken care of ourselves, amen, we can reach 80. And he goes on to say, yet in their strength, labor and sorrow we find labor and sorrow because if you're living you have to labor if you're going to eat and even in our labor and even in those days they are filled with sorrow for the bible said it will soon cut off our days It'll soon cut off and we fly away and i guess that's what we get the song uh, one glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. But let's get back to the text here. Because I'm certainly not a singer. I'm about, not about to sing a song. What we have to keep in mind here is that the 91st Psalm is considered a prayer of Moses. It is a prayer of Moses. So therefore, the years refer to the length of life in the wilderness so that the whole generation died off within the 40 years and died off within the 40 years and because of that you can number those days moreover we find no authority is given here to limit our lives else 70 to 80 years we have already seen that some men live longer than this when Moses wrote it. So I don't take this, personally, I don't take this as God's allotted time for man, especially since some are reaching well over 100 years. Again, we got one gentleman living now, he's 117 years old when I last checked, just the other week. So personally, personally now, Barring no accident, I intend to be around well in two to three digits. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I intend to be around well in two to three digits. Now, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Because one thing for certain, I have taken care of God's temple. And I didn't wait until I was old to do so. I started as a young adult training and taking care of this temple, making adjustments throughout my life as to what I ate and what I didn't eat. Praise the Lord. And how often I ate whatever I was eating. But I made sure that I was training, that I was exercising, that I was eating good and owning what I needed to eat. Praise the Lord. I didn't need to live. Amen. Glory to God. Or however we say it, I simply ate to exist. I ate to exist and not just live to eat. Amen. So based on my track record, how good God has been to me, I intend to go into the three digits. My God. I mean, I'm 66 years old. I'm not on any medication, never uh, has been uh, for anything, not allergic to, to anything. Praise the Lord. I still got my life, health, and strength. I'm strong. Praise the Lord. And I'm a veteran of six surgeries. Amen. And I'll pull through all of them very strongly. Amen. As though nothing was ever wrong with me. But then that is a result of me taking care of myself in this temple, amen, that the Holy Ghost live and dwell within. It's the temple of God, and I must take care of it in order so I can continue to do all that he has called me to do without hesitation, amen, glory to God, and without being sick and broke down, amen. So. Here we are. But isn't this amazing how sin has robbed us of life 
from nearly 1,000 years all the way down to 120. And so this is why it is so important to be in health and live all the years that are intended for us. We can if we want to. As the Apostle John said, Beloved, dearly beloved, I would that you prosper and be in health. Be in health. Even as your soul prosper, it's going to take work. It takes work to be in health. And we should put just as much emphasis uh, in our health, amen, as we do trying to get rich. Amen. So let's grow in our health as we grow in the word uh, as well because it's very important. Amen. So our actions and our ways, and you have to agree, speak loudly of this fact. Amen. Because many of us don't take care of ourselves. We can if we want to, but we don't. We wait until we are sick and old to try and turn our health around for the better. Yes, we do. Sadly, many don't make it. Mm -mm. Many do not make it. Why? Because the damage has already been done. Rather than having a quality life well into our old age, we struggle to survive. Lord, help your people today. So listen, we're not done yet. Next week, we'll do a review and then talk a little about death. Amen. Again, we're born, we live, we grow old, and we die. Amen. And those of you who believe that you will be living when the rapture takes place, I'm not mad at you. Because I know some who are dead right now who thought they would be living when the rapture takes place. And I know I didn't get left. I have gotten left yet. Amen. Keep believing that. That's your hope. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord should continue to delay his coming beyond your appointed years on this earth. You are going to die. No way around it. No way around it at all. So I'm not mad at you. Live with that hope. I mean, I hope to be living when the rapture take place as well. But I'm also... Uh, not naive to think that I'm not going to die. Amen. Glory to God. If he should delay us coming, I'm going to leave this earth by way of the grave. Glory to God, this old body. But I know I'll be with him regardless of what happens. So then, I pray that you have been enlightened by what we have already studied. And as I close in prayer, I strongly I very strongly encourage you to take excellent care of yourself. You can either take the time to live for your wellness, or you can use that time to live for your illnesses. My friend, it's your choice. Praise God. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Again, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God, to share your word to study your word and to understand your word, oh Lord God. Thank you for the means and the ability uh, to do these recordings and broadcast them, Lord, so they're reachable by anyone over the internet, oh Lord God. Give us a hunger for your word, but more so, Lord God, let us be doer, doers of your word, because we know that it is the doer who shall be blessed in his deeds. Now keep us until next week. As we continue this study, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Look, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. God bless you.